So in this video, I'm going to be reviewing Donald Trump's The Art of the Deal. Okay, so I came across this book while I was building my company and why, while I was myself negotiating multi-million dollar deals and I really didn't feel that I had uh, a direction. I felt very alone and I, did, I had a lot of, I was going through a lot of dilemma in my life and I was still very young. I was 27 years old when I was doing this and uh, I had very little experience and a lot of the things that I was coming across were very new and very scary, very intimidating. And it was also a time in my life where I was dealing with high profile executives that were 25 years older than me. Okay, 25, 30 years older than me. And they were way ahead of me. They were way more technically sophisticated than me. They had this whole life experience behind uh, them. And I was in a position where I was leading them, where I had to manage them, manage their uh, expectations of me and perform at a high level. And I really did not feel that I had, I felt alone and I wanted some guidance of someone who had been there and done that. And I picked up this book called The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. And I w was told by my mentor, Dan Pena, very positively about Trump. And at that time, he's the only one probably who spoke positively about him. Because the whole media, if you open up the news, they only had bad things to say about him. So I trusted the advice and I started to go through the book. And it absolutely transformed the way I saw business and business deals. And the book begins in 1980s where Donald Trump is still in his uh, late 20s and he is just discovering the world of deal making. So he starts off with helping his father, Fred Trump. By the way, a lot of people believe that whoever he is, it's because of his father. And he actually inherited a lot of money from his father, you know, and it's not true because his father was he had some money, he had maybe a couple of million dollars or maybe 10 million dollars, something like that. But he was doing deals with, you know, family homes, like small to medium sized residential unit. It was a, on a completely different side of the city. And this is in New York City. And the deals that Donald Trump did was in a completely different part of the city where you had, uh, you know, like he did deals with Hayat hotels and he was building skyscrapers. I mean, his father did not do stuff like building a skyscraper and, you know, like fighting with the government and getting like very complex deal approvals, you know, doing deals with Hayat hotels, you know, buying casinos, like big casinos, you know, $100 million, $200 million, $300 million deals. And this is in the 1980s. I mean, it's a big, big deal. And so he starts off really, I mean, at in his late 20s, where he's still discovering the, the business environment. And he is trying to network his way into the elite class. And, and the book talks about how he managed to, manages to get into private clubs, even though he, you know, even though the private club did not want to want him there, but somehow he made friends with um, the owner of the private club. He kept calling as a young, young guy and uh, he found himself inside this private club. From there, he would meet like big high profile lawyers, experienced lawyers, and he started to find these deals and he was starting to look for these deals. And he also talks about how he was rejected by so many banks when he was starting out and how he struggled initially, but he did not give up. And eventually the book talks about, you know, both the ups and downs of deal making. You know, it talks about why there are some times where the deal making will become dry. Like there, there are no deals, you're not doing any deals, you're kind of sitting and waiting for the right opportunity. And he talks about the importance of not doing a deal also. 
So he had several opportunities that were presented to him, but they were not valued at the right price. They wanted too much. And he decided that he doesn't want to enter at those prices and he decided not to do a deal. You know, some people, they want to do a deal bad enough and then they do a bad deal, right? My mentor says, if you want to do a deal bad enough, you'll do a bad deal. So it's not just about doing a lot of deals, it's about doing the right deal, entering at the right point for the right reasons and having the skills to turn it around and transform that business. So the whole book provides several strategies of complex mergers and acquisitions, transactions, real estate transactions, and the deals in his case were very, very legally complex. Okay, so for example, he would go into a site and he would want to acquire uh, that business, but they would have a lot of problems with licenses and governments and lawsuits and bad debts. So the whole book is surrounded around, and his whole strategy is around turning shit into gold. Okay, that's why he's known as someone who has the Midas touch. Anything he touches becomes gold. And he talks about the importance of actually seeking out some problems and not running away from problems, but confronting the problems and coming up with solutions using your creativity. And he really um, presents himself as an artist. You know, he says, I am an artist and I wanted to become an artist uh, all my life. I wanted to be like Elvis Presley, he says. And he says really that I am an artist at heart and the deal making is not a science or mathematics for me. It's actually an art form. And, and he demonstrates with every transaction that he breaks down and he breaks down some of his biggest deals at that time that he was doing, I mean, in his late 20s, early 30s. I mean, just think about it. Like how much experience do you have when you're in your late 20s and early 30s? And by the time he was in his early 30s, he had already established a skyscraper with his name Trump on it, you know, and it's just so remarkable for someone that age to be able to do that. And it's not always smooth. I mean, he expresses the, amount, the kind of challenges that he faces throughout this process um, and his, he was attacked by the media often he was attacked by the government he had lawsuits that were going on with the government with the city uh, and he would win those cases and he wasn't sh he he wouldn't shy away from lawsuits he wouldn't shy away from confrontation he wouldn't shy away if a transaction size is really really big he wouldn't shy away from debt you know and typically i remember my whole personality was not to get in trouble okay i should not get in trouble i want to avoid trouble but this man was it seemed like he was going into the arena which was were in complete chaos and they had a lot of troubles and challenges you know he was getting into deals which which had bad debts which had lawsuits which had litigation going on it had a lot of complications you know pressure from the public, pressure from the media, pressure from the, government, from the government and the way he manages all of that at that age and the amount of creativity he uses to turn things around and to get things done fast and quick uh, and his leadership styles, how he uses fear uh, to, you know, to twist someone's arm at some point, how he, how he uses litigation uh, as a business tool, how he uses litigation to get the enemy to submit and how he talks about you know that you cannot really avoid enemies because if you start to become successful people will become jealous of you and if you have an image that's really larger than life and you are getting a lot of attention there will be agencies and people that will come after you for no reason at all but once you gain, pub gain publicity it's you are incentivizing people to come after you because if they talk about you in a bad way they get views and 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 they get a lot of business so he also talks about how he dealt with media and how he has always had this conflict with media 
and uh, and he also said that initially you know when he was young it really affected him mentally psychologically that the the things that were written about him so you could see someone as powerful as donald trump at that age was also going through these emotional challenges mental challenges and it really humanizes the person and it really shows you how long he has been in business and how like and his life has not been easy you know people think that his life has been easy his life has been anything but easy you know and he he created a lot of, yes sure i mean he had some support with his family but he created a lot of things on his own i mean his father did not have the ex- the kind of experience in deals that he was doing so he was really alone in all of this and by the way he holds a guinness book of world record for the largest financial turn around in the history so he turned around a big debt that he had and he came out of it when the whole world thought he wouldn't make it so you got to learn from a guy who has been through the ups and the downs right because people who have just been up i mean they don't understand what it, what it's like to be down and people who have just been down don't know what it's like to be up and this man has seen both the sides and he has experienced the full spectrum of super success of you know having jealousy from people lawsuits being thrown on him and um, you know and he turned all those situations around in life and he also talks about why you actually get paid to solve problems you know people want to run away from problems if you see a big mess in a city you know typically we want to avoid that pathway and go somewhere else but it turned out that donald trump always saw opportunity there because those complex situations like lawsuits and debts and you know complications you know legal complications repelled a lot of people those types of things really pushes people away because people are scared of them they don't understand them and they don't they frankly don't want to deal with them uh so he would seek out those opportunities because he saw really these situations and as opportunities because the bank would need someone like Donald Trump to turn that situation around and he would just get in and he would do it and because he did it and because it was so challenging and so difficult that acted like a moat around his castle you know that that removed a lot of competition and he was willing to do things nobody was willing to do and hence he was positioned all in the middle of chaos and then he would transform that situation and make it really beautiful he would transform uh, an area that was really bad and it it was repelling a building that looked ugly and he would just completely transform that building you know remove the lawsuits negotiate renegotiate things make things all right okay he used his tactics of negotiation to structure things uh, in his favor and how he would turn situations around so just if you read the book you will start to see patterns as to how to solve some issues that you may have in your life that may be complex or repelling that issues that you may not have um you know paid attention to you know things like people other people being jealous of you and trying to come after you and you don't know how to deal with those types of situations you know very complex situations he talks about how to deal with all of that and through stories you know he's giving stories of his deals that he did and how he structured them another pattern that i saw was that he went for first thing is he went for undervalued opportunities where nobody wanted to get into but he saw what he could do with it using his skills and creativity so he would enter into the deal and he would always structure the deal in his favor right he always had ways to secure his position before he has even gotten or even entered um even acquired the business he would always add clauses and how he uses laws to structure things around him how he uses deal terms to structure things in his favor and one of the books he recommends is called the art of war by sun zu 
and there is a famous quote in that book which says battle is won before it is even fought and you will see this principle used in all of his deals where he goes in to win he just goes in to win and he has structured things so shrewdly so intelligently in his favor that it's clearly evident looking at the deal structure that he's going to win so there is no chance he doesn't leave a chance for him not to win because he does the strategic planning the budgeting properly estimation of time you know leadership style of managing people getting things done before time so how does he get things done before time uh, and these are some some of the really big projects uh, and he was completing projects that many people could not complete and how going after those challenging situations and overcoming the obstacles and actually getting to success would give him the reputation of a winner and how he uses the media how he uses his contacts with the politicians uh, how he uses uh, you know his contacts with celebrities to lift the business you know celebrities are really people who control large audiences and their opinion is has a lot of power so there are several strategies he uses when he acquires casinos where he does concerts with celebrities and a whole bunch of people come because of those celebrities and the revenue just goes up when the revenues go up he would sell off the business make a bunch of money all right or pay off the debt and and start collecting a bunch of cash flow do a couple of more deals and the other thing that i saw was he was looking at many deals and he was not entering at the deals uh, very easily i mean he would take his time to make a decision he would not be in a hurry and he always had a big pipeline of deals he was looking at and he was very careful when he entered and he always entered at the right price so first thing is he would structure deals in his favor second thing is he would pay as little as possible he would try to negotiate a deal as little as possible i think he talks about a a deal where he bought a plane bought himself a plane i think for 7 or 10 million dollars at that time which was really a bargain price it was a ridiculous offer he made and a bank was trying to sell this plane and they were not successful and they had a deadline and he went in and he uh, acquired this plane like a very large plane at a very low price and that plane he put his name on it trump and that enhanced his image further and he gained more and more authority so he talks about brand building he talks about how putting your name on things and really creating this larger than life persona uh, can help you in business because people want to associate with individuals that have larger than life personas but it always comes with a downside and that downside is you are also available for uh you know some institutions to attack you and make money from it because it's in their interest you are incentivizing them to slander your image and make money and having a big image and larger than life image can create a lot of jealousy from people and a lot of hate but he always said it's always good for business when people are jealous when people hate you when people want to slander your name and when the media is after you i have seen my profits grow so initially he wasn't able to take it psychologically but over time he saw the numbers goes up so he was like you know what for some profit i can um you know tolerate some of this pressure and oppression and the next thing that i saw he did was he always almost always did big deals and he understood the value of time because we only have very little time in this world money we can get back but time we cannot so he always did deals which were large in size very complex very challenging and um, but he knew if the payoff was big enough it would all be worth it and the victory when it happens it will be extremely sweet and it will be at a place where nobody can touch you and nobody can doubt your credibility because you have just gone through such a huge uh, challenge and in return you got this massive deal and most of his deals were hundreds of millions of dollars now just think about it this is in his late 20s early 30s 
and then from there he goes on to have the best you know biggest hit tv show which was more popular than friends the apprentice he made a whole bunch of money from that and he kept having this success after success and he had big failures also and how he turned around from those failures will make you really um make you really think that your problems in life are small and easy to deal with and you will actually have a lot of empathy for the guy and you will have uh, learned so much from it and you will start to think big and really that's the point where i also decided i want to be involved in big transactions you know because uh, otherwise there is no way to justify you know putting in so much effort and putting in so much time into these complex deals the only rational reason would be to have a big payoff so he wouldn't shy away from getting into filth but he always made sure that there is always a big payoff attached to it and then if there is a big enough payoff he would get in do the dirty work transform things and make it better not just for himself but a lot of people around him which gave him publicity he went often in the media he had friends with celebrities he had he was friends with um politicians and all of this was part of his image you know including the big plane that he had helicopter that he had and he really played the media in a big way and now obviously you see him becoming the president of the country still in the limelight in his 70s on and on and on and on you know uh, some of my family members in their 70s just want to retire and they feel tired all the time and he's like oh, no no i'm going to run the country i'm going to run the country again we're going to win again and he's really someone who has the passion for the game right and he doesn't want to rest and he just wants to be engaged in world and to him it's not work it's an art form right and that's the art of the deal that's why he calls it the art and not a science not mathematics but it's really you having the ability to um create things construct things and he was in construction real estate development so he was dealing with decorators uh, he was dealing with architects and he was creating these beautiful designs with the help of them and he was structuring things financially and even the deals he was structuring it in his favor and he would make it a win for a lot of people he would beat a, a lot of people and you know how he navigated those tough uh, you know and treacherous pathway of you know being at the top he talks about it in the art of the deal and he really considers himself as an artist as an entrepreneur and he really gives you this framework to think about business as an art form and that absolutely changed my perspective about business because i always thought it's very boring and the way trump presents it it's not boring it's one of the most exciting and um exhilarating endeavors that you can pursue is you know business and large transactions and they are very complex and you know there are risks involved there are challenges involved but the glory is big and the payoff is tremendous and you know um so it's it's really incredible to have his perspective and get into his shoes and experience life from his shoes it transforms you in some way that i cannot describe it felt like wherever he looked around he saw gold he saw opportunity he saw wealth and because he saw those opportunities in his mind that it became a self fulfilling prophecy and things started to happen in his life so it's pretty incredible uh, i highly recommend you check out this book and i'll talk to you soon mm -hmm.